This video is brought to you by Hoodbeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. Hoodbeast.com. We are beast. What? What? I had just finished recording this video. I had just finished the video and then this news comes out. What? Chris Paul has just been traded. That statement in and of itself is crazy enough. But I haven't even, and I, haven't, and I haven't even told you where yet. Chris Paul has just been traded to the Houston Rockets. Chris Paul has just been traded to the Houston Rockets. All right, the Rockets will have two of the best playmakers in the entire NBA sharing the court next season. There had been reports going on about this ever since the season ended that the Houston Rockets were gonna go in an all out pursuit of Chris Paul. Now, I believe that us fans, every one of us fans believed that he was going to the San Antonio Spurs. We were like, he's gonna go to the Spurs. Of course, the Rockets are gonna make a run for him. But in the end, we think he's gonna end up with the Spurs. That conversation just died. Their GM said they had something up their sleeve this summer to try and compete with the Warriors next year. And this is phase one of whatever it is he has up his sleeve. I'm sure there are other moves to come. So now let's calm down and actually take a look at the actual trade. Here is the official trade. The Rockets, of course, got Chris Paul. In exchange for Lou Williams, Sam Decker, Patrick Beverly, and their 2018 first round draft pick. This was literally the Clippers trying to get something for nothing out of desperation since they knew Chris Paul was gone because they settled for a bag of Lay's unsalted freaking terrible chips. Honestly, I'm still just trying to process everything that went down because like I said, it just happened. Paul, of course, is now expected to sign a contract extension worth around $205 million with the Rockets this summer. And I know some people out there are already questioning the fit and saying, uh, the, 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 the Rockets are not a super team now. The Rockets are not a super team now. Did you not see the Houston Rockets offense last year alone with the, when they just had James Harden and he was the only playmaker they had on the court? Did you not did you not see how good that offense was? And you say they're not a super team now after they added Chris Paul. They add another great offensive player and also someone who could help them out on defense too. Even though they lost Patrick Beverly, so it kind of cancels out, I guess. But still... They, they, they had one of the best offenses in the NBA last year. They were dropping 140 points on people's heads. They add Chris Paul. They weren't a super team last year. They add Chris Paul. They add Chris Paul. People who are saying the Rockets aren't going to be the good this year, uh, obviously just don't respect the greatness that is Chris Paul. They just don't know who Chris Paul is. Chris Paul is Chris Paul. I just don't see how it could possibly be a bad thing. For a team to have the two two of the best playmakers running an offense on the court together. At the end of the season last year, James Harden was exhausted. You could tell from the way he was playing in the playoffs. The man had to carry the Rockets offense by himself all year long. And like I said, they were dropping 140 points on people's heads with just James Harden. And now his job gets much easier since he can sit back sometimes and allow Chris Paul to carry the offense for stretches here and there. And same thing for Chris Paul. Chris Paul had never had a guy like James Harden where he can trust and give the ball to to make some fantastic plays. So it's only gonna make his job easier too. I just don't see how people are already questioning that this won't be a great thing for the Houston Rockets. And to be honest, if Paul and Harden didn't think it could work, Paul wouldn't have gone there. It's that simple. Paul would not have gone there if he didn't think it was going to be a great fit. But according to reports, the two of them have been discussing the plan together all summer long and decided that they can make it work. And also, you look at historically, you look at LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Back when LeBron first went to Miami, those were two guys who were great playmakers but needed the ball in their hands. 
Chris Paul, James Harden, both playmakers need the ball in their hands. They're gonna work out. They're both smart players. They're both great players. They know what they have to do in order for it to work out. They're not stupid. Look at even the Blazers. They have CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard. No one's like, they can't be in the same team. They both need the basketball. They both need to score. You sound ridiculous. You really sound ridiculous. Chris Paul and James Harden will be phenomenal together. And like I said, this is just the beginning. Step one for Houston. They now plan to move the contract of Ryan Anderson and pursue other players, you know, to kind of diversify their roster a bit since really all they have outside of Paul and Harden is shooters, which isn't a bad thing, but they just need more, you know, people who do other stuff other than shoot. You know, I can see them looking at a guy like Paul Millsap. He can still shoot but can also do other things and of course is a much better defender than Ryan Anderson. So this is just step one for the Rockets in their attempt to surpass the Warriors this summer. And now that they have Chris Paul headed into free agency, guess what one of the prime destinations for other top tier free agents will be? It ain't the Brooklyn Nets, I will tell you that it will be the Houston Rockets. Players will be lining up to play along James Harden and Chris Paul because those are guys that make their teammates look good. If you want to look good, you will go to the freaking Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets with Chris Paul and James Harden will make Anthony Bennett look like a freaking scoring machine. If you want to look good, go to Houston. That's going to be the thing this summer. They're going to be a team where free agents really look to sign to to play with next year. And as for the Los Angeles Clippers, RIP to any Clippers fans out there. You guys had a good run of being competitive in the league. What was it, like seven years or something like that? You had a good run and now it's time to rebuild or I hope your team is going to at least start to rebuild. I hope they're not going to try and compete still with what they have because their chances of landing any free agent just went out the window with Chris Paul. No one's saying, oh, I think I'm about to go to LA now that Chris Paul is in there. What? You can expect to see them liquidating everyone on that roster for more young players and for draft picks, especially a guy like DeAndre Jordan. You can expect him to get traded uh, somewhere this summer as well. It seemed like a bad trade on paper for the Clippers, but they had to get something for nothing since he was just about to leave anyways. And uh, the Rockets are about to have the best offense in the NBA next year. Yep. Shout out to the main man, Beastles, for this one. He showed this to me on Twitter last night and I was dying. But at the same time, I felt pretty bad for uh, Chris Broussard. When you make a mistake like that and the entire world sees it, it's embarrassing. Like you wish you could just die. You wish you could just die. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. You wish that you would just never existed. It it's embarrassing, but it happened. And uh, well, he got exposed for it. So a lot of people were scratching their heads when Boston Celtics guard Avery Bradley didn't manage to make either of the all NBA defensive teams. You know, he was clearly one of the best defensive guards the NBA had last year, but was nowhere to be found on their rosters. Just like he was nowhere to be found when Devin Booker dropped 70 points on the Celtics during the regular season. Bradley didn't play in that game. He was out and I can only hope I can only pray that the reason Bradley didn't make the all NBA defensive team isn't because the media thought that Devin Booker dropped 70 on him uh, like Chris Broussard did. Uh, take a look at this video. My word. Uh, and Avery Bradley is a fantastic defender, but didn't Devin Booker put 70 on him? But didn't Devin Booker put 70 on him? But didn't Devin Booker put 70 on him, but didn't Devin Booker put 70 on him? Okay. Somebody should have stopped that man before he finished what he was saying. The producers should have been screaming at him, telling him to shut up before he finished what he was saying. They let him go on there and make an absolute fool of himself. And then the face he made after he said it. This man made a face like he actually just brought up a good point and said something smart. That is now the face someone makes once they have lost all credibility whatsoever. I'm sorry, Chris, but you just took one of the biggest L's of 2017. Phil Jackson got fired! Phil Jackson got fired! Singing through the freaking streets, Phil Jackson got fired! I'm not even a Knicks fan, and I am happy. See, yesterday a report came out that said the Knicks were about to re-sign Derrick Rose, or really wanted to re-sign Derrick Rose this summer. And when that report came out, I just flipped. I mean, what the heck were you thinking? Why on earth 
would you still go after Derrick Rose? No offense to Derrick Rose. No, he had a he had a solid season last year before he got injured. But it's just the Knicks do not need Derrick Rose. Didn't they just draft a point guard in that Frank guy? And now you're talking about giving a contract to Derrick Rose, who plays the same position as the young guy you just drafted, the guy that you want to lead your team into the future along with Porzingis? What sense does that make? That Frank kid needs to be in the game 24-7, and yet you are about to sign Derrick Rose? And I guess that was just the last straw, because not too long after that, reports came out about the Knicks owner thinking about firing Phil Jackson, and then not too long after that, it was said that the two were going to split up, and then a few hours later, it officially happened. James Dolan and Phil Jackson have decided to split ways. I guess it was a mutual thing. I'm guessing he was about to be fired and Jackson has too much pride to be fired. So he was like, you know what? I think I'm done here. I'm going to leave first. This is great news for Knicks fans. I mean, they no longer have to run that outdated triangle offense that was being shoved down the throat. And I'm assuming the new president of basketball operations won't bash on Carmelo Anthony every chance he gets and come on and say that they're trying to trade away the future of the organization in Porzingis. And you know what, Phil? I now believe you when you said the Knicks organization knows what it's doing because getting rid of you shows that they are now on the right path. But at the same time, I wonder if this still means Carmelo Anthony is going to be leaving New York. I know Carmelo really wants to stay there. And I know a lot of Knicks fans love Carmelo, but at the same time, for the better of the organization, it would be good if he left. But the way Phil Jackson was trying to push him out was just wrong. And that is going to lead us to the question of the day. How do you feel about Chris Paul going to the Rockets? Who else do you think that they will go after in free agency? Let me know down in the comment section below, but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. And yesterday, after Adam Silver talked about how he didn't like the teams get rewarded in the draft for tanking, and the league is still kind of looking to fix that, I asked you guys if you have any problems with the way the NBA draft works now, and here's what you said. Question of the day, the draft lottery system is fine. That being said, if there is nothing fishy going on behind the scenes, then why not show us the fans? Also, Adam Silvers is nuts because if we followed his ideal way with the lottery teams work like the Nets and the Suns wouldn't be able to rebuild unless they got lucky. Very lucky. Then on the other hand, contenders like the Spurs, Cavs, and Warriors, if they got a first round pick, it wouldn't be fair at all. By the way, SDC, if I could be a YouTuber. Thank you. Question of the day. I think the lottery could be fixed to make tanking obsolete. If the bottom 15 teams all had the same shot at getting the number one pick, then they would still try to win and they know they're going to be bottom 15. Question of the day. The lottery should not be changed. If Adam Silver wants to remodel the draft lottery, he should be remodeling the super teams at the top of the league. There are tanking teams because of these dynasties and hopes that eventually creating a super team like the Warriors. Taking would be minimized if the NBA was more balanced. The NBA draft system works fine for me right now. You know, bad teams are going to be bad and get high draft picks so they can become good one day. I don't see why you would try to punish the worst teams in the league for being bad and take away their chance for one day being good. It just doesn't make sense. But the league can't profit as much of tanking teams, so that's why they have a problem with it. Like I said, though, don't forget to leave your answer for today's question of the day down in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you once again for watching this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more daily NBA videos. And until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks to my CC, and I'm out of here. Peace!